Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria Abru and I'm from Abru and Associates. In this video, interesting, this is an interesting video. And I have to say one of my favorites. A subscriber asked the question, okay? What town did you live in before you moved to Santo Domingo? And they go on to say, you mentioned that you lived in a town or city in mountains before moving to Santo Domingo. What's the name of this city or town? Tell us more about the community there, the amenities. I love this question because it's gonna work itself into a piece of advice that I have for people coming to settle in the DR. Um, in answer to the question, the town that I lived in was called Hanico. That's J-A-N-I-C-O. It's a small town northwest of Santiago, which is the second largest city in the Dominican Republic. And I got to tell you, getting up there is the windiest road you ever saw. I mean, I had a pretty, whenever I had guests, I pretty much had to have, you know, one of those barf bags in the car because it was just bad. <laughs> they were not used to those twists and turns, but it was a beautiful trip because I was smack dab in the middle of the mountains. Very gorgeous town. Very, very beautiful. Um, this was a very small town. Not no foreigners, I have to say. Um, and just to get a little bit into into my background, I my family's Dominican. My dad has been um, in the U.S. for about 50 years, but to talk and deal with the man, you can you can never tell. You would never tell he was out of this country for any amount of time. So we were raised, you know, with Dominican cultures and traditions. In fact, we weren't allowed to speak English in the house. <laughs> he was one of those. <laughs> and so when I came to the DR and, and, and went to law school, it was not difficult at all. I was fluent in Spanish. I read it. I wrote it perfectly. And people were shocked. They were like, man, this green guy, that, there's something going on. But I was raised Dominican. So when I chose a place to live, it was not a what, what you would call a um, an expat town. That's all Dominican. OK. And that little town, it's very it looks like a postcard. It's just gorgeous. Um, but you don't have a supermarket. You don't have restaurants, you know. Um, you have one gas station owned by a man who pretty much founded the town. <laughs> it was that kind of deal. But I loved it. It was just, it was great. It 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 was home. And the it, very clean town, very beautiful. The town was very, very small, the center of it. And most of the town was what is known as campos, rural areas. So basically, if you went along all the way to the mountaintop, which takes about an hour to get to, you, you, would, you would see the names of little rural campos. Los Indios, um, Bao, Bagosica, and then said, when if you veered off, it would, you see clusters of houses and little businesses in these. It's really gorgeous. And so I lived there for about seven years. And it was, as I said, it was not, you know, no amenities, no advancements. You did have internet, you did have cable, but it was a very small town off the beaten path. Now, piece of advice is I want to work this into, into advice. The reason that I chose that town is because when I moved to the country, I lived in one place, but I did a lot of traveling. I got to know the island, okay? And when I came to this town, I knew this is the place that I wanted to be in. It just, I'm, in, I'm a believer of energies. So the energy of this town just resonated with me. And I felt at home and I felt great. So this is advice that I want to give, particularly to those coming to the country to settle. Uh, give yourself that opportunity. I mean, yes, be in a rush to get here, to, to put your plan B and your exit strategy into, into play, be in a rush for that because you do have to get out. But once you get here, take the time to get to know the island because you would be surprised. This is a very diverse island. There's something for everyone. 
And as I said, I'm a believer in energies and you never know where it is you're gonna find that place where you have that energetic chemistry. And that's important because that will help you to make this your home. I remember there was this one couple, you know, you always have these clients, they don't do worst case scenario, they do disastrous case scenario. These people had every possible thing that could go wrong on a list. So when it came time to, to choose where to live, obviously they went to a city where the hospital's close and the police department was close. And it was just, it was quite something to see them plan, <laughs> to plan their, 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 their stay here, their future here, because it was just the, the, it was just all based on paranoia. Time goes by. And I see them again. They came back to the office. These people were like reborn. And they did the same thing I did. They just went off to a town off a beaten path. People hardly spoke English, no expats at all. And they just, it, they just seemed like different people. And I was like, I'm sorry, are you the same couple that needed, you know, an escort to go from the apartment you lived in the city two blocks down to the supermarket? how how did you end up here and they said you know what we went there and we just knew just something about it and they even became more adventurous people who were led by paranoia just became more adventurous so finding the right place this is my point to you finding the right place is key you're moving to a new country so once you get here take the time you can settle in one place, but take the time. And I, I don't mean move from place to place, that could be quite unsettling, but at least visit. Take the time to spend a weekend here, a couple of days there, and just get to know it until you find the place that is right for you, like I did. And some someday I'm going back to Hanukkah, folks. Don't you doubt that, that's coming. But anyway, that is all for now and see you next time.